So when you look at all $53 million, the only guarantee to the Coachella Valley is $16 million. And as you can imagine, if you put a power plant up near the windmills, guess where the air pollution travels? East. It travels into Palm Springs and Cathedral City, Palm Desert. We know the trails in the Coachella Valley are very well used, but those trails tend to be in the mountains. And it would be nice to have a trail system that was safe and good close to where most of us live, near the Whitewater River. Lots of other cities do this sort of thing. And it brings in jobs and dollars and tourists. And agriculture and tourism are the most important parts of our economy. In the past, the Coachella Valley has built golf courses to attract tourists. I think most of you know our, our golf courses aren't doing as well as they used to. The economy is negatively affected by this. And we need to provide new ways for people coming from other places to recreate. They can't just play golf. Uh, how many of you have been to a CVAC meeting? Why? And I say that kind of in jest. At CVAC, very few people show up to our meetings. Or in Palm Desert, it's not very interesting. We talk about transportation and air quality, and the meetings may not be very interesting. But when we do talk about trails and biking, a lot of people show up. That's about the only time lots of people show up to see that, because they're saying to us, there aren't enough opportunities in the Coachella Valley for hiking and biking and the like. One of the things that I think the Assemblyman is really pushing is green collar, green collar economy. And it's important to our future. We know that tourism and agriculture will continue to be the important parts of our economy. Heavy equipment to it, so the Whitewater River is a source of PM10 or dust in the Coachella Valley. Yes? Have there been any studies to try to assess what the um, how much traffic relief there would be along 111, or is that just speculation right now? Uh, so the there are no there are no studies yet. As I mentioned earlier, all of this is a relatively new concept. It's about 60 days old, so we haven't done the congestion analysis nor the air quality impact analysis, but we will. It's a good question. Is it 1% reduction on Highway 111 and Fred Waring and other north-south streets, or is it 2% or 3%? We know it's not going to relieve all the congestion on Highway 111. Yes. I want you to go back one step to, to why did why was there a fifty three million dollar um, fund allocated for this, the purpose of building the park? I mean, what was the rationale for asking this kind of money up front? So, uh, the fifty three million dollar fund was established because the power plant generates emissions, air pollution. And in order for the power plant to be approved in a poor air quality area, like the Coachella Valley, it had to buy emissions credits from the South Coast Air Quality Management District. The legislation authored by Assemblyman Perez didn't set the $53 million amount. The South Coast Air Quality Management District, through various math calculations set the calculation. So if you have, let's say, 100,000 pounds of PM10 that you generate, multiply that by another number, and you come up with $53 million. So I guess going, my question would be, what health issues would be brought about by that emission 
And what would what will that how will that impact our residents of the Coachella Valley? And I guess my my question would be, how would the funds then help us to improve the health, the quality, or protection of our residents in this part of the valley? Uh, we have a representative of the press, maybe more here, and I'm still going to be very honest. Uh, the impacts of the plant are minuscule, very small. And as Sylvie and I talked earlier today, the plant generates 118,000 pounds of PM10, give or take. That sounds like a lot, right? 118,000 pounds. That's per year. And in the Coachella Valley, we have about 50 tons per day in the air. The analysis that was done for the plant looked at that impact. And I didn't do the analysis, but I believe the analysis. And the, the impact is tiny. The next question is, where is the greatest impacted area? It's 600, let's call it 1,000 feet south of the plant. It's not in Mecca, it's not in Palm Springs, it's not in Palm Desert, it's not in Coachella. It's next to a few windmills between Desert Hot Springs and Palm Springs. And even at that worst location, the very worst location, the impact of this plant, if you're standing there, would be less than 1% of all the other dust that's in the air. So, in my opinion, it's a very tiny impact. And the important thing to me is while it's a tiny impact, that impact is entirely in the Coachella Valley and not in Long Beach or Los Angeles or Santa Ana. And we need to keep all of the funding in the Coachella Valley. Yes? Structurally, I being that CVAC will likely be submitting this as one of the, the key projects and that's been made public. Um, at what point will, obviously CVAC um, has representatives from various cities which are obviously centered um, in the corridor of the majority of the first phase of the parkway being built. Structurally, will CVAC be submitting potentially a package of of potential projects that will impact other areas. Obviously, we have one representative on the, on the CVAC board. So, in order to determine sort of just the distribution of voice on that board, um, will there be an effort to submit projects that also reflect the needs of areas further Eastern Valley, not Lower Eastern Valley? Uh, it's a, a good question. And I pointed out that Supervisor Benoit is one of 13 in Diamond Bar, and he's also one of 13 on my board. He's a very important one of 13 on my board. He's the chairman. And he, along with a number of other people, including the mayors of Palm Springs and other mayors, have gotten together to talk about project ideas. This isn't the only idea. The other things that came out of a group that isn't based in Mecca are retrofitting school buses, are paving unpaved roads in the lower Coachella Valley. So even though those communities, uh, the mayor of Palm Springs doesn't represent Mecca or Thermal, I think there's an acknowledgement that we've got to do a lot of good things in Mecca and Thermal. And that's a belief held pretty widespread in the Coachella Valley. Yes. Um, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to ask a question in Spanish. No problem. How much money will be generated from this project in the Valley of Coachella, specifically for the west of the Valley of Coachella? Will there be an increase for the community? How much money will be generated from this project, specifically for the west of the Valley of Coachella? I don't know. I don't know, because uh, the, the idea is new, and I haven't done any economic impact analysis. But I believe that a construction project has a lot of economic value. And I believe a project that provides recreation has a lot of value. But I haven't quantified it. But I hope to in the next 60 days. 
Yes. Come. My name is Raul Ruiz. Yes. And um, <clears throat> this, in first glance, looks like a really good idea. It'll connect the whole Coachella Valley together and increase jobs. My only concern is that uh, who can use this? Because usually when folks um, have the time uh, to go running and use an electrical car, etc., it's usually not those that are working two or three jobs and can't afford the time nor the equipment to even use the or have the benefit of um, you know, starting jobs because they need the capital to create the bicycle jobs, etc. The other thing is, in terms of public health, one of the reasons why we don't do a lot of outdoor recreational activities here is, especially in the summer, when it's really hot. So just in the back of your mind, when you develop these, you're going to want to create shade, you're going to want to create some areas where there's AC so that people don't get heat exhaustion and, and succumb to heat stroke, because um, that's a very dangerous thing. And I'm just going to take a little step back here. And I know a lot of folks here are looking at the environmental impacts that that plant will have. And I'm, I know a lot of them are already concerned about the major envir environmental impacts that are occurring now. So, you know, there's a lot of priorities that are going on here with arsenic in the water, um, the dust already that uh, exacerbates asthma. And usually those asthma exacerbations are in low-income communities. Um, the pesticides that come up with the air and the dust. And also uh, the undeveloped sewer systems and areas where there's a lack of potable water. So when I look at how do we use this money, it, it, it's, it's sort of a, it's a hard sell sometimes to look at a wonderful project when people here are looking at some pretty major environmental issues that they're trying to deal with that is already affecting their health in a direct way. And those are all great points. Are you, are you done? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I'm not going to ch challenge your understanding of public health. I suspect you understand it uh, about this much more than I do. And those are all great points. One reminder is on this, you might say to yourself, $53 million dollars shouldn't we spend it on arsenic or uh, other environmental issues? That's one thing the legislation did say. It has to be emissions reductions. So there are lots of needs in the Coachella Valley uh, that perhaps funding ought to be spent on, but this can't be spent on it. Uh, with respect to your point that uh, the trail would largely be used by uh, folks that have the time and or money, yeah, I tend to agree with you. Uh, at the same time, I know people in Palm Springs and Coachella, I'm sorry, Palm Springs and Cathedral City and Palm Desert and Rancho Mirage wish they had done the right thing 50 years ago. And when I look at the Coachella Valley, where do you think I see growth and development occurring? Here. And you don't have very many opportunities to build something before your children and their children could take advantage of it. And people in Cathedral City, in Rancho Mirage and Palm Desert, kind of kicked themselves and allowed development to occur in the, in the parkway, golf courses. I think the people of the Eastern Coachella Valley, when they formed the Trails Alliance, wanted to get ahead of the growth curve. So that's one perspective, and your shade one is right on track. I can't change the weather. So thanks. Yes? Uh, according to ICMD, what is the major sources of air pollution? And would it make sense to invest on those sources? We'll assume that it's cars or diesel engines. Uh, for PM10, dust in our air, it's not automobiles, but it's sand and dust. And so, yes, paving, and I see where you're going, you know, paving this road, shouldn't we, you know, pave all the roads in the lower Coachella Valley? That's something for the South Coast Air Quality Management District to consider. Perhaps we should use all the money to pave roads in the lower Coachella Valley. That's a fair question. Actually, where I'm going is where I'm headed is this area does not need uh, PM10 the federal standard. In other words, people are breathing unhealthy air every day. 
and if APMD already made an assessment and said, these are the major sources, would it make sense to invest on those sources so that this area does eventually meet its PM10 standards and complies with federal regulations? I mean, it's, it's, if there's a long conversation I'd be happy to have with you. You could pave every road in Coachella, Mecca, Thermal, and every agricultural road, and you will have virtually no impact on the air quality monitor located in India. Something to think about. And th something to think about, uh, the, the approach here, I think, I've tried to describe is as much about building a great project as it is making sure that the Coachella Valley gets all $53 million. I'm in full agreement yeah. with that. And, but it, and this, what's the strategy to do that? No, I'm in full agreement with that. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up because you're probably right. It's located in an urban area, but it will have a completely significant impact on the monitor that's sitting at the cap at the Torres Martinez. Yeah, it, it could. You're right. And that one already has some negative readings. Uh, the, the irony, by the way, on that is if we were in attainment, we would have got a power plant and not $53 million. That's a possibility. Just, just food for thought. Uh, yes? Okay, uh, I want to say, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm so you, uh, you mentioned that it's not just someone here, but you have to convince 12 other people um, to make this change. How can the community help in being able to convince those 12 other people to get that money for their children? <laughs> politician. Any ideas? <laughs> uh, I, 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 have a, I have a lot of confidence in Supervisor Benoit. And uh, one advantage we have is a close working relationship that Assemblyman Perez has with Supervisor Benoit. And the fact that the Assemblyman authored the bill, John Benoit co-authored the bill when they were in Sacramento. So I'm hopeful that that has an impact. What we're trying to do, I don't have a great answer, because I don't know. Uh, but what I believe is the more we, we could disagree in rooms like this, and we could have an honest debate about, you know, is this project a good one, or is that project a good one? We're going to talk about more projects next week. But when we go to Diamond Bar, the degree we're all saying about the same thing, and that we all, we need the money, and we've got a great range of projects, including paving in the lower Coachella Valley or eastern Coachella Valley, including hopefully a parkway project. So we're trying to have some consensus, but it's hard to do. It's complicated, there's not a lot of time, but we're trying. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit so you're um, saying this parkway will go from you know up until Mecca, you know, but you're leaving out to North Shore. In other words, what about North Shore? Yeah. Uh, and one of the things. What, sorry. Is there more? No, no, she just wants to, you know, yeah. because you mentioned Salton Sea and Salton Sea. Well, North Shore is part of Salton Sea, or is in the area. No, it's not the part of Salton Well, it's it in is, the It is, it's the Shell Valley. I'm from the North Shore, too. I want to talk about it, too. I know you mentioned it, but I didn't know you mentioned North Shore. Yeah, I don't know what you got North Shore. Yeah, I know the video there. I mean, you got it. Uh, one, yeah, one, one reason that I'm here, and I'll be at other meetings, is to hear what the community wants. And we're working on this project, and if the, I hear different things. This project, it may be good, but we shouldn't spend that much money on this project. 
this project may be good, but it's better for Palm Desert and Palm Springs than it is Mecca or Coachella. And I need to hear from the community too, and I think Supervisor Benoit does. How interested is the Eastern Coachella Valley in the trail? I think it's a good idea to build it now before the Lower Coachella Valley or Eastern Coachella Valley develops. But if the community doesn't want that, we'll end the trail at Coachella or India or wherever. We want to hear from the community on what makes good sense. The assemblyman asked me to look into an extension of the trail uh, from Coachella to the Salton Sea and to North Shore. And we're evaluating that. It's a part of the engineering process. Whether it ends up being a part of the final project, you know, there's so many other needs. If the community here says, we don't want a trail extending to the Salton Sea, I think the elected officials will li listen seriously to that. Yes? Um, you mentioned that because under the proposal, the, um, the money from the Sentinel mitigation funds wouldn't be sufficient to cover all the construction costs then maybe around $20 million of Measure A funds under CBAG's jurisdiction would be dedicated to completing the proposal. Um, I wondered if you could just explain for everyone's benefit what that trade-off would be, like what, what might those $20 million go to if they were not going to this trail? What, what is the trade-off we're making with respect to Measure A if we go with this plan? We have a list of $3 billion worth of proposed transportation projects. So I couldn't tell you that if we spent $20 million of transportation dollars, it would stop construction of this project or that project. But I can tell you that if we spent $20 million here, it push, pushes all of the projects down $20 million. And $20 million represents a little bit more than one year of revenue from Measure A and CBA. Well, I guess I'm wondering, since I think probably a lot of folks in the room aren't familiar with Measure A, if you could give an overview of what, like, if we're talking one year's worth of Measure A, what does that mean on the ground? I could give a very long overview of Measure A, but I have four kids at home. <laughs> uh, but I can, and for anybody that's interested in Measure A, it's a transportation program uh, where uh, whenever we buy something in a store, you get sales tax, and part of the sales tax comes to CVAC to build transportation projects. But it's a long story. I'd be happy to get a little bit after the meeting to talk more about transportation. Maybe just, yeah. just a more pointed question along with Measure A. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I have a question. Um, is there an analysis of the use of the community related to the power plan, uh, especially um, uh, along the side? I know that they use an old study in 1996 or something, but there's something more accurate. Uh, Not to my knowledge. There was a, an air quality impact study that was done that evaluated how many particulates came out of the plant and where they end up. And I pointed out that the impact is very small compared to the amount of dust in the air. But there was no health study, no impact analysis. And I know there's a lot of interest in more information, uh, but I'll tell you, I worked on the Salt and Sea project for a while. And I'm tired of studies. And at some point, I'd rather take the money and do something with it and evaluate, and I don't mean to be dismissive about health impacts. No, no, because, I mean, and it goes to the same thing. I mean, you're talking about building this trail, and I'm for it, but recycling, because we serve, I think, the I think maybe the bigger question. Yeah, 
the bigger question may not be what are the health impacts of the plant, but what are the air quality impacts in the Eastern Coachella Valley that affect the day-to-day -day health of people in the Eastern Coachella Valley? And I, I don't know if that's been done any time recently. And by the way, uh, it's the Air District's opinion, I believe, and I don't represent the Air District, that the money can't be spent using fund status. That's their opinion, not mine. Yes? For a lot of organizations from the U.S. from the Central, a lot of different health agencies, we are out there just trying to be healthy and healthy. But we are surrounded around, we're EKA for a reason. We are surrounded around can you stand up so we can hear you back here? We can't hear you. Sorry, thank you. Um, as members of the community and as representatives of different agencies, and as people are trying to help each other to live better, healthier, so we can see a life is free to spend it. When we need to set a one the studies, so we have a basis that we can go on and reduce emissions. That was the use of what like UAA, when they the German approach here. Those kids can have a basis to go out there and say, we're going to do Or even the aggregates you're talking about are using. Those will be release of emissions in the air. The tar, it takes two years to get in over the surprise and the bank as a month. So I'm just wondering what are what are we going to do to keep people healthy? Because we're around the pump, we're drilling gas, propane places are right here to see trains, planes, and automobiles. We are in the hard to count areas. So we're the hardest hit and we're out there the muscle of the valley. Right. And I mentioned before, I'm not with the Air District, of course, but your concerns uh, are good ones. One thing I could do, I do remember a health study that was done 15 years ago on hospital emissions in the Coachella Valley and when, when those occurred and why they occurred. Was it during high PM10 days, high dust days? Uh, we have interest in updating that. And we talked to the South Coast Air Quality Management District about doing a combined study. Uh, it might be something that Buford and I could take from here. And Buford represents Supervisor Benoit with the South Coast Air District and see if there's a way that we could take other funding. So we can't use the Sentinel, I don't think, but other funding to update the health assessments to go Well, if, if construction has to do with <coughs> surveys and everything is due there, building. I understand why you can't use the same basis for programs. So you're going to give us a on housing. Has already proven to be um, something that will end. So if we really want to think about having sustainable, a sustainable community, let's think outside what we've already tried. Let's think differently and bring innovative ways. Um, also, the studies. Um, we just came from a meeting where we heard that. Um, diabetes and lung and pulmonary diseases are something that affect the Coachella community. So I think it would be even higher at, in the eastern part of the valley where the rural community um, is affected most. So um, just thinking about the mitigation and the different issues that are affecting our families, um, this is something that we want you to take with you. And like I say, you're going to continue to hear it, and um, we're not going to stop. <laughs> and if we have to keep saying it, we will. Uh, until we're heard. So thank you very much. I hear you. My name is Margarita Ramos. I am a member of the Comité of the Calle of the Calle Free, representing the Pasquerero Polanco, known as Polanco Gano. We are working as a community to improve the conditions of the life of the residents of Oasis. Hay mucha contaminación de piedra, de humo, tóxico en nuestra comunidad. Por la falta de pavimentos en las calles de paseaderos, por el humo que sale del, 
del doble toque colando que está enfrente de nuestras casas. Muchos de los residentes sufren enfermedades respiratorias por las contaminaciones del aire. Hay veces que los niños, los ancianitos mayores no pueden respirar por la contaminación. La única manera de reducir las contaminaciones del aire es en nuestra comunidad es limpiando los dobles tóxicos y pavimentando las calles. Les pedimos que limpien del quemadero tóxico de Lanzo. Les pedimos que nos ayuden a pavimentar las calles y los parqueaderos polancos y así limpiar el aire en nuestras comunidades. Okay, so my name is Margarita Gámez and I'm a member of the um, Community of Effective Cures and I represent the Polanco Trailer Park, uh, also known as Gámez Mobile Home Park. We are working along with the Lido to improve the conditions of the lives of our residents in Oasis. Um, there is a lot of air pollution and toxic air also in our community because of the lack of cleaning of the streets and the trailer park and because of the smoke that comes from the public uh, of the toxic dump, Lawson, Lawson, toxic dump, and um, that is in front of our homes. Uh, many of the residents uh, suffer of, su from diseases, uh, respiratory diseases, because of the air pollution and there are times that the children and elderly can't breathe because of the contamination. The only way to reduce the contamination of the air in our community is by cleaning these toxic dumps and paving these roads. We ask that you please clean these, um, this toxic dump, uh, Lawson, and we ask that you please help us pave the roads in our powerful parks and also in that way clean the air of our community. Thank you. Yes. Um, I just have a comment. I, I think that what um, I'm feeling and what I believe the community is feeling is a sense of frustration um, and a sense of fear. Uh, what you showed us is too beautiful, and I'm not all for that. Um, but I believe that the amount that you've also showed us is an exuberant amount compared to what you've been leaving us. We are afraid that our concerns are not going to be taken into consideration, and there will possibly not be enough funds left if, in fact, the $40 million that you're proposing to use to continue uh, this the, 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 the path is used, um, um, are used in that way. And a couple of key things you said was that uh, Justice Wilkinson Benoit is the chairman of CBAD, and he also is one of the uh, 13 uh, chair people. So more than likely, a lot of money is going to go towards this path, I would imagine. Um, it's, it's a nice thing. I, I agree with many of your points, and I think they're valid points, and I would like to see it for my children. But the reality of our concerns and the reality of the fears that we are feeling in this moment or the funds that are going to be left to, to, to uh, address what we're saying seems to be in the back of the bus. I understand. And my fear, by the way, I, I have a fear. And my fear is that some or a substantial amount of the money doesn't come to the Coachella Valley. And six months ago, I was the one screaming quietly that the South Coast Air Quality Management District had designated environmental justice areas, and not one of them was in the Coachella Valley. A lot's happened, and with leadership of the Assemblyman and Supervisor Benoit, and Beautiful and I whispering every once in a while in folks' ears, there's now an area designated for this $16 million. We've come a long way. But your right to be engaged, your right to uh, uh, talk to me, your right to talk to the Air District. My hope is we have some consensus over the next few months on how to spend the money. And my guess is there'll be a lot of money directed to some of the things that you've mentioned. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, 
malalignment of policy priority with 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 local needs, um, and you go around the different communities. And like I said, this would be an amazing, you know, visionary kind of bringing a lot of attraction, make national news, etc. Um, but it's hard again; it's hard to swallow to see a path going through the whole Coachella Valley connecting tourism areas when our children need to walk through mud during the during the rain. You know, where they can't get to their bus stops or where it's dark and they don't have safety to go to their trailer parks for half a mile away. And um, and when they do have to deal with asthma exacerbations and, and those kind of issues. And when and when folks here who don't even own a car, right, and they and they can't go to the clinics and to the hospitals that are available, look at electrical cars and a path to, to go that way, it seems very foreign. And so and so we're trying to to you know maximize looking at at if this funds are to mitigate environmental issues that relate to public health, then you know, having a, a paved road with electrical cars to reduce obesity, which is a public health issue also here, may not be aligned with the immediate local needs of what the um, Eastern Coachella Valley, for example, may want. And so Dr. Ruiz, I want to do both. Yeah. And I think there is a lot of consensus in the region to do yeah. both or do as much as we can of everything. Yeah. So I think we share some similar concerns. Yes. Okay. Carmen Vargas. Mi nombre es Carmen Vargas. Yo soy miembro del comité de la calle Pierce y represento el parqueadero Polanco, conocido como Vargas Motorhome Park. Nosotros estamos trabajando con Pueblo Unido para mejorar las condiciones de vida de los residentes de base transporte y por lo tanto los niños llegan muy tarde de la escuela. Su salida es a las 2.40, llegan casi a las 4 de la tarde. Any other last questions? And again, we're going to have another meeting. As representatives of CBAC, as representatives of the legislature, or supervisors, or AQMD, um, I think it's fair to give the community that opportunity to speak first, because what they're doing is they're, they're defending their case. They're saying, you're saying there's $60 million for environmental justice, but yet they haven't had a chance to put it on the table because they're having to defend the case or having to make a case why they have so, so many other priorities and you can clearly see them. You know, so many other priorities versus a recreational area. It's more, they're in need of areas that, that will enhance, will improve, and will expand the, the, their health and, and the ability for children to work and to, to grow up in a healthy environment. And you mentioned you have four kids. And you know, I have a couple of kids too. I mean, last time I wanted to do is be playing baseball out there, yeah, you know, sure. or, or walking to the bus, you know, when it's rainy season and and and, and living next to a, all these sources of air pollution. I mean, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to live in those. So, right. so as a messenger, I, I I really see that that I take it as that. That, that as a messenger, it's, it's, it would be only fair to go back and give the message. To, to, to the CVAC board say, hey, we need to go back and, and make this a fair process because it has not been fair. I mean, it, it hasn't because, I mean, you're here to present on, on a project this, and the 18th will potentially be that if, if we don't change the way we're approaching this. So so I I, I like... Okay, thank, thank, thank you. you. And the process of just starting with the South Coast Air District. And I pointed out there have been more deliberations and workshops and involvement in the eastern part of the Coachella Valley than anywhere. So you believe it or not, you're ahead of most in the Coachella Valley. Yes. 
I mean, I, I do acknowledge that, and I, I thank you, obviously, c Vive and, and all of the folks that have been involved in getting people here to present. Um, I think it's also been a sense that we're getting placed into either you're, you're for or against the parkway, and so there there is that sentiment of, of feeling like we're getting pushed into a corner to say either you support the parkway or the money's not going to come, and I think that that's, that needs to be very clear to the community that the ultimate jurisdiction falls on the AQMD board to make the determination. Project submissions are also um, going to be available to non CVEG, is, is my understanding. Um, so that's one thing that obviously, you know, as we're moving forward, we can definitely consider alternate projects. But likewise, I think there's a concern with the parkway itself. I don't think people are disagreeing that it's a, a negative impact project, but that it hasn't fully been thought through in terms of arterials. I mean, yes, the Whitewater Channel is the main corridor. How will people access that when you're talking about 111 not being properly aligned? Areas that would potentially be connecting from the eastern part of the valley are not even accessible. What assurances, I think, are made in this plan, in this parkway, um, that it'll actually built, be built out to its full Eastern Valley uh, North Shore tip? Because my understanding is that this project cuts off at certain points, and given the priority, it'll be obviously phased out. So that, that's one question. Um, the second question is more in relation to your role as a kind of measure A, again, going back to that point. Um, it's my understanding from reviewing the project list um, from CVAD that most of the projects that are funded through Measure A um, are prioritized currently in the East Valley, looking at many of our grade separations and different projects that are slated to be built in the next you know, three to five years. How will those be impacted? Because we could potentially be double out of luck if Measure A funding is shifted from these projects to build a parkway that'll primarily benefit the mid part of the valley. So kind of lots of questions in that state. I don't remember all the questions, but I'll start with the last. Arterials? Arterials? Uh, yeah, if you're and I have is it, what about all the connections and uh, there are a number of connections that work very well to the parkway, and there are some that don't. Lots of work needs to be done on local roads. I think that was Sergio's point, and yeah, maybe that ought to be the emphasis, is local connections. Yes, a lot of work needs to be done on that, and yes, there are a lot of connections to the Whitewater River trails. We have bridges, we have all sorts of connections. Uh, with respect to uh, Measure A, um, there was a discussion at CVAG just Monday, what was Monday, yesterday? Uh, yesterday about making sure that if we did spend money, if we spent money on the parkway, that we not affect any of the high priority projects, particularly in the eastern part of the Coachella Valley. There's a concern at CVAG about that. And one of the things we're thinking about is if we move forward with this project, we use the Air District money soon to build parts of the project and CVAG money later on as we build out parts of the eastern Coachella Valley. With respect to your North Shore question, I think I addressed that earlier. And that is, I'm here, the point was made that I'm a messenger, it actually goes both directions. And while you may make points about projects I have no responsibility uh, dis discussing. I do have responsibility on this parkway project. And if the community here doesn't want the parkway, I want to hear that. Or if they th think they want it, but it's a much lower priority, then we can talk about that too with respect to how funding is distributed. Maybe we don't spend money in the lower Coachella Valley, eastern Coachella Valley in the parkway. Uh, Just yes. one, one, one last one. Absolutely not. A after, after. So. This is an elephant in the room that you worked on, though, which is the Salton Sea. When we talk about um, actual particulate matter and kind of the elephant in the room for potential environmental air quality hazards. So, what opportunities are there, if any? And I see Buford kind of nodding his head. So there may not be any. But at what point? 
would the Salton Sea conversation come up in this process? I hope not. Uh, so the question is about the Salton Sea, and some of you may not know, I have a, a history with the Salton Sea and a lot of passion and love for that lake and the North Shore and the communities around the, around the Salton Sea. That said, the air quality issue talks about mitigation. Uh, the air problem with the Salton Sea will come because water is being moved to the coast. And the responsibility for mitigating the air quality problem is from the state of California. If you're concerned about money from the Sentinel being diverted to something else, a lot of money could be diverted to the Salton Sea. And it wouldn't be available for a parkway or paving or anything else. Maybe there's an opportunity for a little bit of money. But even then, I say if the state, the state wanted that water to move, the state should be responsible for fixing their air pollution problems. That's my personal opinion. Uh, so, uh,